Hi friends, and welcome to group meeting. So this week for group meeting, we're focusing on the book, A Letter to Amy. And if my friends remember, the book is about our friend Peter, who writes an invitation for his birthday party to his friend Amy. And so today we're going to be talking about invitations and recipes. So invitations are these special pieces of paper that let people know that they're invited or allowed to come to an event that you're having. Sometimes we use them for birthday parties or weddings or for lots of other different reasons, but they let people know that they're allowed to come to our party. And so if we look at the first invitation with just the balloons and the very colorful outline, it says you are invited to, and then there's a space to put the person's name, birthday party. And there's a spot for the date, the time, the place or location. Um, and if they need to RSVP, which means they reserve their spot at the party. Um, and so the birthday party is the occasion. It's the reason for the party. And then we also have our other invitation over here where it's for someone named Jackson's birthday party. And it, we can't read it very well, but it says Sunday, June 9th, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. So a very long birthday party. It's like two hours. Um, but it's Baby Shark themed, probably because the person who's having the birthday party likes Baby Shark. But then but there are also invitations just like Peter's that are very homemade, where it's just a piece of, piece of paper that says you're invited to my party at this time, um, at this place, and I hope you can come. And so the timing of the party is very important because it lets people know when they should show up at your house or wherever you're holding the party. And so there are two different types of clocks that are on my screen right now. There is the analog clock, which is a very classic clock, mostly in classrooms. Um, they're not really used that often anymore because we have slowly switched over to digital clocks. That's where we can plainly read the numbers on them. And digital clocks are a little bit easier for people to read because it very easily says what time it is based on the numbers. Whereas with the analog clocks, our big circle clocks over here, it can be a little harder. It can be a little harder to read them because, well, for one, this one doesn't go to 12. So this one's already wrong. But it has the little tick marks and each tick mark is five minutes. So it can be a little more complicated to read um, the analog clocks, which is why most people uh, do digital clocks nowadays. Um, but the timing is very important for the party because it lets people know when they need to show up. Even Peter almost forgot the time on his invitation. He was like, oh, no, I forgot to put the time in. So he wrote it on the envelope. It is Saturday at 2 p.m. And if I'm not mistaken, my friends actually get to make invitations in writing. So it will be fun to see what my friends make during writing. Um, as for group meeting, we're going to move on to the next part of group meeting, which is recipes. And in a letter to Amy, since it is Peter's birthday, his mother makes him a cake. And usually when someone makes a cake, they use a recipe. And so a recipe are the steps and ingredients that one needs to follow in order to make um, whatever they're wanting to make. In Peter's mother's case, a cake. And so the recipe that teacher Amber is going to share with you is one that she found online um, that has to do with pancakes because teacher Amber loves pancakes. And so the first part of the recipe tells you how long it takes to make the recipe. Um, so like the prep time, how long it takes to get all the ingredients together, and then how long it takes to cook, and the total amount of time that it will take you to make the pancakes, as well as how many servings the recipe makes. Uh, and servings are how many pancakes the recipe will make. So this recipe will make eight pancakes. And then we have all of our ingredients, which is very important because we need to know what we need to put in the batter in order to make pancakes. And then... 
the last part of the recipe is usually the directions. And you want to make sure that you read the directions the whole way through. That way you don't accidentally make any mistakes. And then your recipe might not turn out as well. And whatever you make might not taste as good. And so when you're making a recipe, there are usually lots of different tools that you'll need to use. Um, here's some, just some examples. So there are knives if you need to cut anything up. Um, or measuring cups to make sure you're measuring the, sh the right amount of material. Like over here, it says we need one and a half cups of flour. So the measuring cups over here will help us measure out that amount of flour. Um, and then, of course, you have a whisk you mix things with. Um, you have a spatula, although not all spatulas will look like this one. Like this, this is a wooden spatula. Um, or you'll have a potato peeler, or some people just call it a vegetable peeler. Teacher Amber makes a lot of potato dishes, so she calls it a potato peeler. And also tongs, if you need to grab something. But there are a lot of different things that people will use in order to make their recipes. And friends, that's pretty much it for group meeting today. I hope you enjoy learning about invitations and recipes. I can't wait to hear about any of the recipes your families may make. But that's it for group meeting. And I hope you have a great rest of your session. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.